All right. 3.2 Combinations. The number of combinations of R objects chosen from a set of n items is ncr is equal to npr over r factorial. So, we're introducing a new letter called C for combinations. And I know I've used the words combinations and permutations and and um, different uh, ways of expressing it. So there's some terminology that involves these. Let's talk about what the terminology rep what these what NPR over R factorial, also known as NCR. NCR is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. That is equal to C at N comma R. C at N R is the same as NCR, which is the same as this. Now, another way to write combination notation is writing it like that, without a C or anything. It's a bracket with N on top and R on the bottom. On that note, note that in combinations, order doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter order which order you select items. In permutations, order matters. So an example of that is that in a permutation, you're looking, let's say, a combination. To be able to turn a combination, you must have a specific order. Your lock on your locker has to be done in a certain order. But So even though the word permutations is there, the locker combination actually has a specific order. Now, in combinations, so for example, what combinations are is when you play a card game and you select a bunch of cards. It doesn't matter whether you picked ace first or king first or even a two. It won't matter what you picked first. It matters what you have in the entire hand. So the pretty much the rest of this unit deals mostly with combinations. Now, how many ways can a five-card hand be dealt from a standard deck of cards? So, we have a standard deck of cards. How many cards are there? Well, okay, let's look at some information. Order is not important when combining cards to form a hand. So, king, queen, nine, eight, three is the same as three queen, three queen, nine, k, eight. So, it doesn't matter what order you get them in, it matters what's in your hand. So, there are 52 cards and we need to choose five of them. So 52 choose 5, which is 52 factorial over 52 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial on the denominator. And that, folks, you use to calculate how many combinations you can have in a standard deck of cards. So standard deck of cards you're going to have over you're going to have 2,598,960 ways to have a five-card hand. So there are three mil, um, two and a half, just over 2.5 million. Interesting. All right, let's keep moving. Example two. In a competition, junior chefs make a gourmet soup by selecting from 10 different ingredients. How many different soups can the chefs make if... The soup must contain four of the ingredients, five of the ingredients, and six of the ingredients. So this is our, these are our options. Well, four of the ingredients means that we have ten that we start with. We need to choose four. From that, that is ten factorial over ten minus four factorial times four factorial, which equals... 210. So there are 210 different ways I can make soup with four of the ingredients. Let's try five of the ingredients. Well, that's 10 choose 5, which is 10 factorial over 5 factorial over 5 factorial. Why the first 5? That is 10 minus 5 to give you this one, and this 5 has to do with the R. So now we have 252 different ways to make that soup with five different ingredients. Let's look at six different ingredients. Six different ingredients, 10 choose 6, gives us 10 factorial over 4 factorial times 6 factorial. And just, just a reminder where I got the 5 and that 6. 
and we find out that 10 choose 6 is equivalent to 210. Okay, moving forwards. Example number 3. Erica is making a platter of four types of cheese and four types of crackers. She has seven different cheeses and six different crackers. In how many ways can Erica make the platter? So, we know we have seven choose four. We have seven cheeses. We need to choose four different cheeses from those seven. And we have six crackers, types of crackers. We're choosing four of those types of crackers. All right, and what we need to do is how many ways can Erica make the platter? Well, we need to take seven choose four times six choose four because we need this and this. Whenever we and need something, there's multiplication involved. So of the seven cheeses, we choose four. Of the six crackers, we choose four. This entire thing will make one platter. It's not cheese or crackers, it's cheese and crackers. And we end up getting the platter. We'll have 525 different ways Erica has to be able to make a platter. So there's multiple ways to make that platter with the cheeses that she has. All right, moving forwards. Example number four. How many paths can be drawn by joining pairs of points? So let's talk about this. So first of all, we're looking at these points. And you know what, folks? There's actually real-life applications to this. And the fact that we have real-life examples, okay, we talked about in class the different types of examples that would rep represent this. Um, we talked about how we can use this in real life. Think about it. In which ways can we see this in real life? Something to think about. Moving forwards, we want to know how many paths there are that can be drawn by joining the pairs of points. Seven choose two. So there's seven choose two equals seven factorial over five factorial times two factorial, which is equal to 21. Now note something important. No three of these points can be collinear meaning that they cannot lie in a straight line. So that's going to be important to remember that when you have these seven points, they cannot lie in a straight line. The next part says, how many triangles can be drawn using the seven points as vertices? You have seven points as vertices, and we want to know how many triangles to draw. So the vertices means the corners. So how many triangles can we draw? Well, we have seven points. We choose any three that we want. And that gives us 7 factorial over 4 factorial times 3 factorial, which is 35. So I can make 35 different triangles with the dots that are up here. Well, folks, I think it's a lot easier to use the choose formula to calculate how many there are than it is to actually draw the 35 different triangles. Okay, moving on. All right, your homework is in 3.2, and that's the end of the lesson, folks. Have a numerical day.